Anderson, Nevada. I'm a board certified family physician and we're continuing our series on Wheat Belly and Grain Brain. In the fourth chapter of the book Wheat Belly, the author tries very, very hard to convince the reader that wheat is this most addictive, dangerous substance simply by doing a literary trick. What he does is every time he uses the word wheat, he puts some horribly unpleasant sounding associating word with it. So he'll say wheat is like crack, or wheat is like heroin, or wheat has devastating mental effects on you like any other street addict, or that it'll turn you into somebody who's you know cruising the hate ash barrier or something like that. And the book uses this because there is just nothing to the idea that wheat is addictive. Addiction is something that I treat all the time, and addiction requires certain components to them. The most important when we're trying to analyze the claims of wheat belly are, number one, tolerance. Do you keep needing more and more and more of this substance to keep getting the same effect that you used to get with much less? So all of us kind of either have experience with people who drank a small amount of alcohol and then rapidly increase the amount of alcohol that they drank, or people who, you know, smoke a cigarette now and then and then gradually got to the point where they were smoking, you know, one or two packs a day. All of us have seen this experience and that's what tolerance is. The other component that you need to have is harm. The thing that you're doing has to be harmful. It has to cause problems. None of us are worried about being addicted to oxygen because A, we don't need more and more oxygen as we keep breathing and B, oxygen is good for us if we're not doing anything horrible with it like lighting it on fire or things like that. So you have to have those components. The book could have tried to make a case for those components being present with wheat, but of course it couldn't. You know, it's not like you wake up in the morning somewhere in some other city and you're all covered with bruises and cuts and you know you've emptied out your bank account and it's all because you ate a bowl of grape nuts. You know, that's ridiculous. So the one thing that I really wanted to bring up was how absolutely cavalierly the book misrepresents scientific findings. The book quotes a study by a Dr. Drunowski that looked at feeding and behaviors that associated with feeding when they blocked an opiate receptor called naloxone. And the book says that in this study it showed that the people who got the naloxone ate less crackers and less you know, pretzels and less bread. And in fact, in the study, that was absolutely not true. The amounts of bread, crackers, and pretzels were no statistical difference between the groups that got naloxone and the groups that didn't. The only differences that they found were between sweet, high-fat food consumptions like chocolate and chocolate chip cookies and candies and foods like that. So the book completely misrepresents this. And unless you're really careful and you're reading all the sources and looking through it, you would never know that. You would get to the end of the chapter where he's saying that you know people would feel horrible if they were feeding their kids crack or heroin, but they think nothing of feeding their kids wheat, as if these are even remotely the same. Yet, you know, if you just read the book and you don't think about it and you don't research it, you might actually believe him and do something ridiculous like that. So, be careful with this book. This book will absolutely misrepresent the results of scientific studies. If you have any questions, uh, please give us a call at our office number and you can find all our information at www.drallenwellness.com. Thank you for your time.